Hey guys, Cha Chan here, and today's video I want to talk about fursuits. Not just any fursuits though, I'm talking about fursuits made of blankets. And these are fursuits made of blankets. These are my two suits, this is Munchkin, he was my first ever fursuit, and uh, he's a little bit wonky, I'll admit, <laughs> but he's not too bad. But uh, yeah, this is Cotton Flop, my second suit, and much, much, much better than Munchkin. I pretty much only wear cotton flop now. <laughs> anyway, so today's video we are talking about fursuits made on a very, very tight budget. I'm talking under £100, like £100 is the maximum price. Okay, so uh, first things first, I will show you the materials used on cotton flop. And by show you, my, I've got a list here. And yes, this is a Hannah Montana sticky note I will mention. <laughs> So if you pause the video and read this, you can see all of the materials and the costs, roughly, that uh, I used on Cotton Flop. So Cotton Flop came to a total of about £96. And the reason Cotton Flop didn't cost over £100, like she didn't cost so much to make, is because we used blankets. All the other costs such as foam and toy stuffing and plastic for the eyes and all of that stuff, regular prices. I mean, I got it as cheap as I could. I mean, yeah, you want to make sure you're not buying terrible quality things, so like, don't skimp out too much on stuff like the stiffened felt or the eye plastic. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, you you get what I'm saying. <laughs> you get what you pay for. And uh, blankets, blankets. That's why we're here. You know, I did write notes, I'm just a bit scatterbrained in general. Anyway, so I've got my notes here with advice and stuff about why we should use blankets instead of faux fur when we are on a budget. So faux fur, the actual proper stuff, costs about £50 a metre, give or take, and you want at least two colours, usually about three, and that's going to cost you 100 to 150 pounds if you're buying one meter length of each color. So yeah, you know, that's very expensive. That's over half the costs of what it costs. In fact, that is the entire cost plus more money of what it costs to make this fursuit, which is a mini partial, by the way. We've got the paws and the tail back there. Same with Munchkin. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's why I recommend using blankets if you don't have the money to buy faux fur or you're scared to use faux fur, because I know I am. I don't want to mess up on god knows how much money worth of fabric and not be able to afford to buy more. So blankets are really good for being less stressed while you're working with it, and if you mess up it's easy to get more because they're kind of cheap. I will say though, blankets can be very very difficult to work with. Uh, this white blanket likes to pull apart in the direction of the fur, so you have to make sure that your stitches are very strong and you've gone over it a couple of times. So I recommend you have some sewing experience and have a little like swatch of the fabric that you cut out and you pull it in the different directions. Make sure you know where it's going to pull apart and where you need to take more care with your stitching. And I recommend using the blanket stitch and the ladder stitch for this. Uh, when I stitch the pieces of fur onto the face, I stick them down and I ladder stitch together because I don't really think the sock method is going to work with blankets. It, the sock method, if that makes sense, you know, where you sew it all together and then you like peel it onto the face. Did that make any sense at all? Fursuit makers, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so before I go on to advice on how to use blankets, I will give you a couple of recommendations on what will work well with blankets, if that makes sense. Granted, I have only made two fursuits so far, I'm working on a third, and uh, it's also made with blankets, so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so first recommendation is that plush characters, characters based on plush toys, or whatever you want to call them, those designs will work very well with this because, you know, it's like, it's like a giant plush toy. And you also want to keep the length of the fabrics and the pile length in mind. So to counteract the fact that we don't have any floofiness, 
I decided with cotton flop here to give her really long ears to distract from the lack of side floof. And there's no hair poof, so I gave her these horns, and yeah, that, that's about it. <laughs> and uh, Munchkin, well, uh, we've got the fin here and these big ears, so do the same kind of thing there. <laughs> to be honest, I think Munchkin would benefit from a redo. I mean, he is my first fursuit, so I won't do anything to him, but uh, he could do a bit of a redesign. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, just keep in mind the fabric length, pile length, hair length, all oh, same thing. So when you're designing, keep that in mind. Some other advice is avoid small details, like don't have lots of little tiny dots everywhere, to do that kind of thing, because it's not going to work with the blankets, especially when they are like this white one that pulls apart very easily, you're not going to be able to get those small tiny details. The last piece of advice is fabric glue. Don't hot glue fabric glue. <laughs> With hot glue you'll be able to feel all the little bumps if you don't smooth them out quickly enough, whereas with fabric glue you can take your time, and you need to take your time with this, because a uh, blanket difficult to work with, recommend fabric glue. Just uh, smear it all over, smooth it down, and then stitch together, continue till you've got a, a third head. <laughs> so I have a couple bits of advice for this finishing off section of the video. I didn't really script this properly, I've just got uh, my notes on this butterfly sticky note. <laughs> so uh, your foam base. Your foam base should be as smooth as you can possibly get it. I mean obviously don't like shave it down to nothing but make sure that it's smooth and there aren't any lumps or bumps. Make sure the cheeks are nice and smooth and you don't have any like obvious layering going on. Just any lumps and any bumps. It'll all show because the material is quite thin. You aren't going to be able to hide any like uh, problems with fur because there's no fur, it's just like minky style fabric. Oh I should mention, these are minky style blankets. Uh, like like what plush toys are made from but it's a little bit longer so more furriness going on um, but still kind of like plush toys are made out of. Oh I did actually use some actual minky inside the mouth here. Don't recommend minky for inside the mouth, I recommend lycra just because it's easy to breathe in but uh, minky for the teeth is okay and the tongue. But uh, just don't, I don't recommend lining the mouth with minky unless you don't want to breathe. I can barely breathe in either of these fursuits. <laughs> but um, yeah, where was I? So smooth head base, or you are going to have lumps everywhere. I also recommend using a good thread when you are stitching. I use Guterman, but. Uh, Whatever brand you have in your country will also do the job, you know? Just, I really recommend a good thread so you don't have as many popped seams, because you will have popped seams anyway with these blankets. Just uh, be aware of that. You will have to maintain your suit, maintenance stuff. Especially on places like here, I find. The uh, corner of the muzzle, that has a lot of stress on it, just because of fabric stuff. But, uh, yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about is where to put your seam lines. Because we don't have any fur to hide the seam lines, you have to think really carefully about how you're going to hide them. <laughs> so uh, I'll get rid of Munchkin for this because uh, he's old. And we will look at Cotton Flop. Uh, ignore that woodlouse, he is just chilling. Um, I'll leave him there. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Cotton Flop. And where are her seam lines? <laughs> so, I'll start with the nose. The nose has- are we even focused? Okay, there we go. The nose has three seam lines. One here, one here, and one here. So each corner of the nose has a seam line. Obviously the shape of your nose will determine this, like where the best place for it is, but I recommend trying to hide them best you can. Sometimes more can be less. <laughs> So just uh, keep that in mind, sometimes more seam lines can be less, as in you could have just one across the top here, but that would mean a very obvious seam line. 
Anyway, uh, on to the next bit. Uh, that's just one piece of fabric on the top of the muzzle there, so no seams there. But then the actual muzzle sides, we have two bits of fabric, so we have one here and one here. The seam between them is down the middle here, and then we have a seam line on each corner of the mouth here. And uh, that's it for that. Just uh, kind of regular places, really. Down on the bottom jaw, you don't really see the underside of the jaw as much. So we have one seam line down here, then I also have one here and here. And uh, then the cheeks, we have one joining each cheek together here. Then both cheeks are the same, so I'm not going to go over both of them. <laughs> I have one, two, and three. And you know, try to angle those back as much as you can. Obviously you need to make sure that it fits the form, but you know, make sure it's not obvious as well. Okay, and uh, the top of the head, the forehead. So I use one big bit of fabric for the entire forehead. And we have three seam lines on it total. We have one here, and then on each temple we just have one there, which is covered by the ear flopping forward. We're out of focus again. Camera chill, wow. <laughs> okay, on the back of the head uh, we just have one seam line there. To be honest, if you just have a simple one colour head thing like this, you probably don't even need that seam line just depends on your design and how you built the back of the head. Uh, mine's a bit lumpy so I did need that, <laughs> but you know, that, that's fine. With the eyebrows, I will say you need to sew these separately. You need to, you know, get two bits of fabric in the circles, also four bits of fabric total, two per eyebrow. Uh, sew them together, turn them inside out, finish them with the ladder stitch. I also put fabric glue inside them to squish them together, make sure they don't puff up, and then glue it onto the head with fabric glue or hot glue. You can get away with hot glue here, but I still recommend fabric glue. And then ladder stitch it on when the glue is dry. Just there. Uh, make sure you do ladder stitch it on. The horn's very simple, but your character might not have horns, but uh, these are just two bits of fabric sewn together and uh, pulled together at the bottom with a gather stitch, gathering stitch, same thing. The ears will vary from character to character. Obviously Cotton Flock has a lot of design here, so that is irrelevant to the seam line thing, because you know design doesn't really count as seam line exactly. I'm talking more about uh, flat colours like this, not tones shifting stuff. Um, but yeah, this is just still as little seam line as possible. She wouldn't have had one here, but uh, I was running out of fabric, so I uh, couldn't do much about that. Anyway, so that is where the seam lines are on the face. Uh, for paws and stuff, there's not much you can do because of the way they are built and all of that. If you can figure out how to have less seam lines on your paws with them still looking good, then go for it, experiment. I highly recommend experimenting, especially with blankets as they are cheaper. But uh, yeah, you can have 3D eyes on these suits, it's just my preference to make 2D eyes. It's just easier to be honest. I also recommend you don't skimp out on this plastic. Don't use foamies or uh, craft foam for the eyes, just use the plastic. It is stronger, it will last longer, and all of that stuff. <laughs> I also recommend the stiffened felt, it looks good. and. Um, you know, you saw Munchkin. Munchkin's eyes are not lined with stiffened felt, their, their eyelashes are minky over some craft foam. It's just a bit not good. <laughs> so that was my video on how I made my fursuits, roughly. Uh, I didn't go over all the basics of like how to make a head base and how to do this and that. I just wanted to show you how you can use blankets to make a cheap fursuit that still looks good. I think that using blankets is better than using that cheap craft fur, you know, the, the horrible stuff that's like, uh, it looks matted no matter what you do to it. You know, don't use that stuff. I mean, if you want to use it, go for it, but I just recommend using blankets over that stuff. Anyway, that's uh, my video on how to make a fursuit for under £100. 
or it might cost you a bit more depending on how many blankets you need and stuff. The average price for a blanket, if you are unaware, is anywhere from as low as £4, this white one cost £4, up to about £20 if you want a very good one. Um, I recommend buying the king size blanket, so that's about 2x2 two two meters, or 200 by 200 centimeters. So, um, yeah, okay. I think that's all I have to say. I'm gonna go before I keep rambling. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will try my best to answer. And, uh, yeah, links to all my social media are in the description. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next one, and bye!